The pilot study was a phase two open label uh, multi-center uh, study in uh, patients as, uh, for second line treatment in uh, relapsed or refractory large B cell lymphoma. And it was for patients who were uh, considered by the physicians as not good candidates for stem cell transplant. And they also had to meet uh, one of six transplant non-intended criteria, which included patients who were uh, age uh, 70 or above, ECOG performance status two, or levels of uh, uh, dysfunction in organs, such as renal dysfunction, kid, uh, lung, uh, pulmonary dysfunction, uh, cardiac dysfunction, or liver dysfunction. Uh, so uh, the median age of the patients on the study was 74, and 79% of the patients on the study were above the age of 70. A quarter of the patients were actually ECOG performance status two, and a quarter of the patients had uh, renal dysfunction. Uh, we also uh, had uh, measured something called hematopoietic cell transplant specific comorbidity index, uh, which is known to uh, predict uh, outcomes after transplantation, but we did collect that data for this CAR T cell study as well. And, uh, uh, and uh, we know that patients who have, in, in the transplant literature, patients who have uh, HCTCI score of three or more have uh, poorer outcomes. So we included uh, patients uh, with HCTCI score of three or above as well. And more than 40% of patients actually had HCTCI score of above three. Uh, we also had included patients with uh, primary refractory and early relapse disease. In fact, 75% of patients were either primary refractory or had uh, a, a disease relapsed within 12 months of uh, uh, frontline chemoimmunotherapy. Uh, so the uh, primary objective of the study was overall response rate by uh, IRC criteria, and 80% uh, of patients uh, responded. Uh, the complete response rate was high at 54%, and uh, complete responses were durable. The median uh, duration of response for complete responders was uh, 21.7 months. Uh, the median progression-free survival and event-free survival were nine months and 7.2 months, respectively. Uh, responses were more durable in complete responders, so in uh, patients who had achieved a complete response, the median uh, progression-free survival and event-free survival was much better at 22.6 months. Uh, the median overall survival was not reached uh, for this patient population, and it was actually better for complete responders. Uh, so that's the primary efficacy outcomes. When we look at the safety outcomes, uh, 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 the incidence of grade three or higher, uh, uh, you know, uh, treatment emergent side effects, our uh, most common ones were uh, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and leukopenia. If you look at all grades, the most common were neutropenia, uh, fatigue, and cytokine release syndrome. And then, uh, you know, when we look at, uh, you know, prolonged cytopenias, which were considered as uh, grade three or higher cytopenias persisting at day 29 after lysocell, that was seen in about 30% uh, of the patients. Uh, about 7% of the patients had grade three or higher uh, infections. And unfortunately, there were two COVID-related deaths uh, in this, uh, uh, in the treatment emergent period. And there were no incidents of tumor lysis syndrome, macrophage activation syndrome, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, secondary malignancies, which we noted in the treatment emergent period. Uh, most importantly, looking at, uh, you know, a CAR, a CAR T side effects such as cytokine release syndrome and neurologic events, uh, both, uh, uh, if you look at all grade cytokine release syndrome, that was 38% of patients, and uh, uh, all grade neurologic events were in 31% of the patients. Uh, patients who had uh, grade three CRS, there was only one patient who had it, so uh, it was only 2%, and then uh, neurologic events grade three were seen in three patients, so that was 5%. So very low grade three effects. Uh, and then there were no grade four or five cytokine release syndrome or neurologic events. Uh, there were no use of vasopressors, and there were no patients who, uh, the, on the protocol, there was no mandate for using um, uh, prophylactic corticosteroids. Uh, these uh, cytokine release syndrome and neurologic events were uh, managed uh, by, with use of tocilizumab and steroids. Tocilizumab uh, was used in 16 patients, and only one patient needed more than one dose of tocilizumab. 
So that was uh, really good. And then uh, uh, a number of patients, so about a third of the patients, were able to be monitored as outpatients. Uh, and of those patients who were monitored as an outpatient, less than half of them needed hospitalization. Uh, and uh, the median time to hospitalization for them, uh, more than uh, mo most of the patients actually needed hospitalization uh, beyond uh, 72 hours after uh, receiving the lysosome. Uh, the median duration in the hospital for those patients who were outpatients were, uh, uh, were, uh, was only eight days, and the median duration of hospitalization for the entire population was uh, 12 days. There were also no notable differences uh, between, uh, in safety and efficacy between patients who had HCTCS score of less than three or three or above, and there were no differences, uh, and the CR rates rather were similar across multiple subgroups including patients who were primary refractory, those who had high HCTCS score of three or above, or those who received uh, bridging therapy.